Hi, uh, my name is Stefan, and uh, this is a hobby. I'm a, I'm a watch repair hobbyist, which uh, means that lots of little parts still go flying, and I, I tend to get myself in trouble. This video is specifically about this, and and what this uh, <laughs> what this is all about. This, of course, being a microscope. When I started with my hobby, this was the extent of what I had. And in fact, my desk, I, I had, these are just uh, little plastic storage units and a piece of plywood. And this was sitting on my actual uh, office desk. And uh, I would put it on my desk when I had a little time to play. And then I would put it in the corner. As I got more tools, as I got a little bit more serious about things, um, that started to get a little more tricky and things start piling up everywhere. I also noticed that, um, that working with loops, which, which of course I do, uh, you know, here's, here's a loop, so that's typically what I was using, um, was fine. And that's what all professional watch repair guys use. And they seem to generally uh, not think a whole lot about microscopes except for um, looking at how jewels, uh, if they're broken or not, uh, you know, etc. How clean things are. Um, but I was finding myself getting stressed uh, when I was working under the loop and it would get hot and sweaty and the loop would fog up and I would get hunched over and at the end of the day when I walked out of the office, uh, you know, my eyes would be um, just whacked and tired and I was achy and and I was like, okay, am I having fun with this hobby? I mean, this is this is really stressful. And in addition to working with tiny parts, I felt like I was just getting all stress. And so I really was wondering about whether whether a stereo microscope would would make a difference. Uh, a lot of other industries that work with with microscopic parts or very small parts uh, use these. So why not the watch world? And uh, I'm going to come right out and say that. This has been a game changer for me. I will, uh, I cannot imagine going back to just using loops. I've now disassembled, overhauled, repaired, and reassembled uh, three different watches uh, solely under the microscope, using the loop really um, only for when I was using the time grapher, because you know I had my watch sitting here on a time grapher. I had my time grapher over there, and I and, and then I adjust it. Uh, pushing the regulator with a piece of pegwood. And so for that, I was using the loop. But for everything else, I, I did use the microscope. And it's great. Let me tell you, it's just great. Uh, the, um, the stereoscopic uh, ability, that, that is a, a game changer. I thought it was going to be tricky to work under a microscope, uh, not close to the loop. And I thought there was gonna be a, sort of like an intimacy issue. Not at all. Working under the microscope is fantastic, uh, and it uh, it it makes uh, it possible to, for me, at least, to do much better work than I was doing under a loop. I'm seeing things I just didn't see before. Uh, dirt, <laughs> uh, but also in terms of oiling, I can really see how much oil I'm putting in there. Uh, so I, I really feel my my job has been elevated in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, going into the specifics of what this micro uh, microscope, I almost said microphone, microscope is about, is uh, that the, the main part um, <clears throat> is the head, the dual arm, uh, the dual arm stand, and uh, the base of that stand, which is a nice, heavy stand. So this can move in and out, and uh, it's there's no fear of it tipping. That was all uh, the uh, Amscope, um, I've got my notes here, the SM4 NTP microscope. And what that is, is a 7, 7x to 45x microscope. Uh, and that's that's the basic bit. They sell uh, this same model with all the doodads that I'm going to go through uh, for more money than what I spent buying them separately. 
So once you have the microscope, then the next uh, bit that you'll want for this is uh, a Barlow lens. Barlow lens uh, is basically a wide angle lens, uh, gives you a wider shot. And this is a 0.5 Barlow lens. And uh, on Amazon, I was able to get it for half the price that Amscope has it. So that was $22. Let me, uh, let me go back and also say that the microscope, the, the stand, <clears throat> the base, the basic head of it, uh, that was, um, that was $587. However, you can find coupons, which can knock off uh, quite a bit. And so I was actually able to knock $90 off that. So I think that the whole thing shipping to my door ended up costing uh, around that, a little bit less. So uh, we're not talking no money. However, in the, in the, no pun intended, maybe pun intended, in the scope of things, uh, I think that this, this is money that's, that's well spent. Uh, because I want to have fun with this, and I think we want to have fun with this hobby, and, and this is something that really is, I think, good money spent. And, you know, if you decide at the end you don't want it, you can always sell it for probably three quarters of what you paid and, and really be not that, you know, in the hole. <clears throat> so the Barlow lens was $22 versus, I think, $49 if you were to buy it uh, through Amscope in the 40s somewhere. Same with the light. Of course, you do need to have this light. You want to have an LED light, uh, and that attaches to the to the lens. Um, and you need to get one that does have that special attachment because otherwise, it's not gonna it's not gonna hold. Uh, that was um, twenty three bucks. Again, this is something that would cost a lot more if you were to go through Amscope, uh, probably forty, fifty, sixty dollars and up. Uh, so. So that's one another area where you can go to Amazon, find something, and, and buy that. Uh, the great thing with these new ones now, everything's LED, so there's no there's no heat. The older microscopes used halogen bulbs, and uh, so that could get to be a, a bit of a heat issue. The camera is, uh, and this was something I did a lot of research on because uh, a lot of these microscopes tend to have USB cameras, and USB is fine for uh, basic stuff, but but you just don't get the frame rate and the uh, the um, the lag, the lack of lag that you would get with a camera that's outputting HDMI. So this is a camera that outputs HDMI. It can also do USB, and it can also record to a chip, which is which is great. And with a remote control that comes with a camera, you can shoot off stills, you can shoot off video. The video you have a variety of different rates. Uh, the default rate is a 1080 at 60 frames per second. So you can actually actually watch, it's not high speed, but you can watch something a bit faster than what's typically, uh, you know, broadcast frame rates, which are 30 frames a second or so. This camera, uh, and this is where you'll save some significant money versus buying everything through Amscope. This camera is $135. This is an HDMI camera, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a proper camera and it's real-time image. You need to get a C-mount adapter for the camera. And also because, in fact, the camera says it's a C-mount, but it's actually a, a CS mount, which is a difference of five millimeters, but that five millimeters makes a difference. So the, the adapter ring is uh, 36 bucks, 37 bucks. And then this little C to CS adapter is another $6 or so. So, so you need to have those two parts uh, <clears throat> to make that work. Once the camera is mounted in there, I notice it doesn't go in quite straight, which is a bit of interesting. So I guess the CMOS must be a bit uh, cranked. Uh, but once it is in there, it locks down, and then it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. The um, the one thing that you do have to think about if you're used to working with uh, a desk, a watch desk that's kind of up near your sort of chin or neck level, is that you need a lower desk. So I did have to, I did have to buy this desk and reconfigure myself. But you know, I, I'm glad I did it. It allowed me to have a bit more of an ergonomic thing here going on, and 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 I'm just happier in general. So whether you build a desk of your own, you find an old scrap desk, or you do what I do, which is I bought this desk for uh, it is an L an L shaped desk that I got uh, from Amazon for 120 bucks. I I couldn't have built it for the same price. Cheap. It's a small desk. I wouldn't. I wouldn't imagine it working well for, uh, you know, 
except for maybe for children. But for watches, for watch work, <laughs> it's great. Uh, so the desk was, uh, was another $120, $130. So that was that was an addition, you know, once I decided to really go hog wild with this. Some of the great things with this microscope. <clears throat> it is a par focal microscope, which means that you can zoom in and zoom out and it stays in focus. That is beautiful. So you can actually zoom in, focus, zoom out, and you're in focus. Great. The the little monitor. I, this is this was a good idea to get. You could plug this into any HDMI monitor. If you have an extra one lying around, then don't worry about this. But I wanted something that was nearby my desk so I could look over and make sure that the camera was A, in focus, and then B, recording when I wanted it to be recording. So that was $65, and the uh, the HDMI cable, which is a, I, I wanted to get a small one, was eight bucks. So these are things that you, you may already have lying around. And so that is uh, the, the bit. Now, admittedly, this is a more deluxe way of going with um, magnification than buying a digital microscope or whatever. But it's, it's, I, I really think it's worth it uh, over the course of, of this time in terms of the hobby. I mean, there's this expression, cry, buy once, cry once. And I think that uh, that was a good idea. I mean, I have used, I have used these little guys here, <laughs> which, you know, they work, but they're just for taking images or whatever. This, this I'm actually using, this is, this is now a functional part and, and used for everything with building them, building and disassembling and working on this on the uh, watches, it's just the way to go. I I don't quite know why more uh, watch repair guys don't do it this way. Um, I think there's a tradition of using loops and um, and loops, you know, they work. But uh, but this is better. It's three dimensional. If you have two good eyes, I know I know um, one of our dear guys, Michael Bolton, only has one good eye. Uh, I'm sorry about that, Michael. But but uh, but if you have two good eyes, <clears throat> and you have, and you're able to see, you know, stereoscopically, that is a real game changer from a loop, uh, in terms of playing with a hairspring or in terms of just picking anything up. You, you have no issues with with uh, depth perception under this under the microscope. It's wonderful. And again, like I said, the, uh, the 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 working distance is fine, so there's no issue with that. That is something to definitely watch out for when you are buying or looking at buying a, a microscope, because if you don't have that working distance, you, you know it's it's useless. So that was something I checked. All of these SM models that Amscope makes have the same have the same working distance. So uh, even if they show different numbers, <clears throat> they're talking about the, the, the lenses. The Barlow lens, which is an important thing, increases your working distance. So that's great. What's nice is that I'm working and uh, my neck does not get achy. I'm able to, to work. Right now this is exactly how I would be how I would be working. And uh, my eyes are very comfortable. My neck is fine, my back is fine and uh, and I can see things in a way that I could never see with a loop. So that that is uh, that is that. I mean, I, I uh, if I sound evangelical, it's it's because I'm I'm quite content at this point with this. The additional funny kind of thing you'll notice I have in some of the shots I have sort of these walls uh, built around my desk, which which is of course to try to keep some parts from entering uh, different dimensions. It's helped somewhat. Uh, there's still springs that have made it over the wall, like a, like some kind of escape from, from 1970s East Germany. But uh, one of the things that's kind of good with the microscope is there, there was, I was just working on a movement that had very, very, very small clip springs, just ridiculously tiny. And they really just would spring and fly. And I, 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 they were so tiny, I was, I was actually impressed that they could get the distance they were getting because of just air resistance, but indeed they did. So I finally resorted to taking a piece of plastic and taping it to the microscope and taping it to the table. And by doing that, I was able to work through the microscope. I could forget the plastic was there, but I had that extra barrier to, to stop, to stop uh, runaway and, and fly away springs. Obviously, hobbyist issues. If you're, if you're great with, a, with, a, with a tweezers, I guess that's not as much an issue, but it is an issue. And I would, 
I would rather not be on the floor for most of the evening, you know, desperately trying to find a, a spring that's an obsolete part that I have no chance of finding at Cousins or anywhere else. So, so that's it. So, so that's my basic, uh, I, I don't know if I'd call it a review, but my, my sort of experience uh, with this microscope <clears throat> is it perfect. Uh, pretty close, but not quite. One of the things I noticed, the camera does crop the image slightly from what you see in the, uh, actually not so slightly, it's probably about 30% crop, crops the image from what you see in the, in the eyepieces. So if you're using the camera to make sure, you know, when you're disassembling to record your action so you can put the thing back together, you want to make sure that you're not working off screen. So a quick look to the screen is always a good idea to make sure you're really centered. That, that's something that I've, I've learned. Also, always double check that you're in focus and this has a focus ring here. Um, while the while the eyepiece is par focal, as I said, I'm not sure that the uh, that the camera is situated at a par focal distance. I've noticed that I do have to adjust. And so, sometimes in your excitement, you pop in zoom work and then playback. It's out of focus, and that's um, of course you know terrible. So you want to make sure you're in focus. Recording is great because I can then review my work snap off some pictures, uh, you know, send them to a f my iPhone or whatever so I can actually look at what I was doing in, you know, in order to put it back together. You know, for, for a mechanical, you know, a hand wine, you don't need to do that, but, you know, like a chronograph, I mean, I, I, I need to refer to images in order to ever hope to get that thing back together the way it was. So I, that's, you know, I'm a hobbyist. That's, that's the thing. Uh, the only downside and i'm not sure that it's enough to even call it a downside but the only thing you have to be a little bit aware of unlike using a loop is uh you know when you have a loop and you're working up here and you've got the movement right there you have your little you know parts tray right right you know right next to you so you you know you unscrew something and you can just put, put it to the parts tray and because the loop of course in your head is variable focus and depth it's really easy to do that uh, with this, the parts tray uh, is off screen, so you don't see it, it see it through the lens um, unless you're really playing with playing with things here. So, you know, taking a screw off, you know, you do have to sort of look down and and, and make sure that you're getting to the parts tray. Uh, it's not a big deal, but but that is the one thing is the the looking away thing, um, and you do find yourself you know zooming and focusing, and, and so there's a bit more fiddling, but. Uh, I have found that to all be giving me a certain zen that uh, I wasn't getting with the loops. So uh, none of these things are things I would call downsides. It's just a slightly different uh, workflow, and it's not enough to, to be affecting anything. Uh, so those are, those are really, that's, that's it. Those, those are my uh, thoughts um, on my experience with working with a scope. I, I really... Uh, do wonder why more watch repair guys, and I mean, I see the guys at Omega and, and you know Rolex, and they're working with loops, so so you know <laughs> they they know what they're doing. Um, but I, I also wonder if maybe it's not just an aspect of of the tradition of of the uh, of the craft, and that some people are just you know not willing to change or don't want to change, or they say you know well it worked well enough for the for the greats of the past, why would I do anything different? But uh, for myself, I, I just I see things I, I just never saw. Um, for instance, dressing my tweezers and my screwdrivers. I did that under the microscope, and my screwdrivers are they're better than when they came out of the factory by far. And also, just I never, 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 never saw those edges under uh, any kind of loop that I have. So that's another aspect of this. Um, it's it's just a world of difference. And with this uh, Barlow lens, you're working at a factor of 3x to um, to about, I think, uh, maybe 14x, 10, 14x. If you take the Barlow off, you have 7 to 45. So the uh, the 3x to 7x is, you know, pretty much like the loops, um, but uh, it's it's but it's in stereo, so, you know, 3D, and your field of view is is very nice and large with this. So it's. Uh, that's a, that's another thing that you do want to watch when you buy these is is to make sure you have the the wide the extra wide field of view lenses which this model this model has. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully that's not too boring, and um, there you go.